Welcome to the best horror movie you never saw, where we shine a light on horror movies that you may have missed, haven't seen in a long time, or just plain forgot about. On this episode, we're looking at 1999 supernatural horror film, Stir of Echoes, based on the 1958 novel, A Stir of Echoes, by Richard Matheson. The movie is written and directed by David Kep and stars Kevin Bacon, Catherine Irby, Ileana Douglas, Kevin Dunn, Lisa Wheel, and Jennifer Morrison. In any other year, Stir of Echoes would have been looked at in high regard as a true horror genre standout. Yeah. Yeah, sure. This is an effectively eerie ghost story with a strong central performance that builds to an unexpected climax. <laughs> Stir of Echoes had the misfortune of being released in 1999, arguably the best year in the history of cinema, Whoa. but also within weeks of the sixth sense. I see dead people. The M. Night Shyamalan film was also effectively an eerie ghost story with a strong central performance and a truly unexpected climax. I want to thank you guys for watching the best horror movie you never saw and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like the video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. In a case of bad timing, The Sixth Sense was still a dominant force at the box office by the time Stir of Echoes was released, and it was sadly left in the shadow of Bruce Willis, helping a kid that sees dead people. yippee ki mother That being said, Stir of Echoes has found an audience over the years, and it has emerged as more than a clone of The Sixth Sense. Well, I know that now. Its success lies in the simplicity and its attention to a growing sense of suspense and dread. Wow, what? What happened? Are you okay? Stir of Echoes sees Kevin Bacon playing phone operator Tom Witzke, just your typical guy living in a working class neighborhood in Chicago with his pregnant wife Maggie, played by Kathleen Irby, and his son Jake, played by Zachary David Cope. The family is the kind of likable bunch you need to base a story about the supernatural around because when the shit hits the fan, you really need to care about them. <laughs> Their lives begin to take a turn when Tom allows himself to be hypnotized one night at a party by Maggie's new agey sister Lisa, played by Ileana Douglas. While Lisa's in his mind, she leaves a suggestion for Tom to open up, and that seemingly innocent request leads to Tom beginning to experience some sort of paranormal activity. As it turns out, Tom opens up enough to begin seeing the ghost of a teenage girl, played by Jennifer Morrison, and he becomes obsessed with initiating further contact with her. Tom's working-class life is turned upside down by his obsession, and he ultimately loses his job and begins to neglect his family and friends. And the only person who seems to understand is his young son, Jake, because like most supernatural horror films featuring small children, he has strange visions of dead people too. Tom, Writer and director David Kep proves to be the right choice to adapt the source material because he was an avid fan of the novel's author, Richard Matheson. When it came time to do his next movie, which he wanted to be a horror film, Kep sought inspiration from Steven Spielberg's 1971 television film Duel, as well as Matheson's work on the Twilight Zone TV series. Kep decided to purchase a copy of Matheson's A Stir of Echoes from a used bookstore, and producer Gavin Pallone then secured the rights to the book. Kep expressed being very nervous about approaching Matheson to ask him for his thoughts on the script, which featured changes that he made to Matheson's story. As it turns out, Matheson admired Kep's 1996 directorial debut, The Trigger Effect, and he responded positively to his draft of the script. Ooh, that's a bingo. <laughs> Kep was heavily influenced by Roman Polanski's Repulsion and Rosemary's Baby, as well as David Cronenberg's The Dead Zone when it came to his approach to Stir of Echoes. All of those films are drenched in an atmosphere, and it's something that Kep brings to great success in Stir of Echoes. The director gets into Tom's unstable mindset through a series of eerie, tight close-ups and distorted point-of-view shots. And while the film is a supernatural experience, the film's study of obsession is first-right frightening. I'm supposed to dig. Tom's tunnel vision focuses on the ghost of the dead girl to the point of virtually excluding everything else. His wife Maggie tries to be a beacon of support, but since she's not able to share his experience with him, she's unable to understand what is driving him. 
We're afforded enough time with Tom before his paranormal experience that we're startled by his gradual mental decline. That credit goes to solid writing and direction from Kep and a truly committed performance from Kevin Bacon. Stir of Echoes was produced by Artesian Entertainment for $12 million, a relatively slim budget for a film of this nature. <laughs> Principal photography took place in Chicago and lasted 39 days in the period from October 5th to November 21st, 1998. And as you watch the film, you can almost feel the spooky fall vibes from the period of the time the movie was shot. Stir of Echoes is a slow build and things escalate at a very deliberate rate. This isn't a film with scenes of extreme gore or a plethora of cheap jump scares. The movie cares more about being a character-driven story with a high level of tension. Achieving the momentary scare isn't the goal. Kep wants some of these scenes to truly stick with you. Some of the moments that make an impression include Tom's hypnosis scene in which the character envisions himself in a theater and everything apart from the projection screen is painted black. What's the worst that can happen? This is lifted directly from Matheson's book and Kep wanted the hypnosis scene to feel as if the audience was experiencing it, which is why we see it through Tom's point of view. The sequence certainly gets the job done and you do lose yourself in the moment as Tom falls deeper into hypnosis. Speaking of Painted Black, the Rolling Stones single Painted Black is effectively used as a plot device in the film. The song has been used in other films and media, but it's creepily well-placed here and honestly provides the soundtrack for the film's highly underrated trailer. If you're looking for a scene with a bit more bang for your butt, Kevin Bacon's tooth extraction scene is something that will definitely make you turn from the screen. It could very well be just because I turned away during another tooth extraction in 1973's The Last House on the Left and a moment during the closing credits of 1998's Wild Things. And when speaking with Entertainment Weekly about how the sequence was done in Stir of Echoes, Kep said it was all practical effects and inspired by a nightmare he has. Stir of Echoes was released on September 10th, 1999 and ranked third for the weekend with a mere $5.8 million. Can you remember any of the things that Don't you... ask the boy any more questions. Talk to me. The film stayed in the top 10 for three weeks, and after a 14-week run, the movie grossed $21 million at the domestic box office. While Stir of Echoes grossed beyond its $12 million budget, it was still considered a bit of a disappointment at the time of its release. Most felt that the film suffered because it was released shortly after previous high-earning supernatural movies that year. The Sixth Sense had already taken the industry by storm and had spent five straight weeks at number one before the release of Stir of Echoes. Hell, even Stigmata, which opened the same weekend as Stir of Echoes, was critically less well-received, ultimately took the top spot that weekend, grossing $18.3 million. Sadly, Stir of Echoes ended up getting the short end of the stick here because it was simply drowned out by the competition. Stir of Echoes resonated well enough to finally garner a sequel in 2007. Stir of Echoes, The Homecoming. It's a made-for-television movie produced by Lionsgate Entertainment. The film, originally titled The Dead Speak, premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel and stars Rob Lowe and Tatiana Maslany before she got all orphan black and She-Hulk on us. While the film is a sequel to the 1999 movie, its only connection to the previous work is a similar premise and the inclusion of Tom's son, Jake Witzke. The character had a key role in the original film, but he only plays a secondary role in the sequel. Here, buddy, please. Hey, come on. Hey, what's the problem here, Knock huh? it off! As you've probably already guessed, reviews for the film were mostly negative. Bloody disgusting's Ryan Daly saying, any Stir of Echoes sequel made without David Kep's involvement is sure to turn out to be a real hack job. And this shoe definitely fits homecoming. Kevin Bacon and David Kep would eventually reunite in the psychological horror film You Should Have Left, released in 2020. It's another horror tale based on a book, this time a 2017 piece by Daniel Kelman, but it doesn't reach those special heights of 1999's Stir of Echoes. Despite not finding its audience upon its initial release, movie fans have lauded the film as a creepily made ghost story, and some of them even go as far to say that it's even better than The Sixth Sense. 
Shyamalan's ghost story may have gotten all the praise during the special time in 1999, but Stir of Echoes still holds up as a film that may give you a bit of pause before you walk into a dark room by yourself.